So we get the same interval of convergence for the derivative and the antiderivative. Let's check it out for the derivative. The answer for the antiderivative is going to be the same argument. Okay, let me suppose I have my series, f of x equal to a sub n, x minus c raised to the n power. So we're going to be centered at c. And let's suppose I'm able to get my answer using the ratio test. So interval of convergence comes out of the ratio test as follows. Limit n going to infinity, we're going to take the n plus first term of the sequence. So we just take what's here and put an n plus 1 in. Then we're going to divide by what we have here with the n. So, and then we're going to take the limit. So what's going to happen here is we're going to have to limit n going to infinity. I'll be left with, here we'll get cancellation, leaving me with x minus c in absolute value. And then I'm going to have out in front absolute value of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n. Now, to get your radius of convergence, where this comes into all of our calculations, it's just saying that this term here is going to go to 1 over r. And then we'll have an x minus c there. So you'll note when I go to the ratio test and demand that we have this thing strictly less than 1, well, the first thing we would do is push the r over to the other side, leaving me with x minus c strictly less than r. And then what we would do is decode by just pushing the minus r on the other side, and so on. So this is how you get your interval of convergence centered at c with radius equal to r. Let's replicate this with the derivative. Okay, my derivative is going to be given by, we bring the n down, and then we take one off the exponent. So I'm going to take the limit of, we're going to put, wherever I see an n here, I put an n plus 1. So that gives me the top. And then I'm going to divide by what I have here. So that's going to give me n plus 1, a n plus 1, x minus c raised to the n. And then on the bottom I have n, a sub n, x minus c raised to the n minus 1. We're going to take the limit of this term here. Let's break it up into three pieces. First, I'm going to set out the n plus 1 over n. Then we're going to set aside the a sub n plus 1 over a sub n. And I'll set aside what happens when we cancel here. I'll just have an absolute value of x minus c. What happens in the first term? n plus 1 over n, as n goes to infinity, that's going to go to a 1. a sub n plus 1 over a sub n. We saw from our last argument for the old series, to get my radius of convergence equal to r, this is going to go to 1 over r. Then I'll have my absolute value x minus c. So you'll notice what comes out of a ratio test is going to be the same exact thing as what we got when we did it to the original series. 1 over r, absolute value, x minus c. We set that strictly less than 1, and then we just decode, and you'll notice you're going to wind up with the same interval that we had up here. Note, we don't know anything about the endpoints because our ratio test is going to be inconclusive when you wind up having exactly one, and then exactly one is going to be the endpoints themselves. OK, any derivative, same argument, except you got to deal with the n plus 1 in the bottom instead of the n in the numerator. For another example, let's consider f of x equal to some gone from 0 to infinity, x minus 1 to the nth power over n factorial. So here's the first few terms. Just remember that 0 factorial is equal to 1 and 1 factorial is equal to 1. I take the derivative. So in the general term, I'm going to take the n and bring it down, and then we're going to take 1 off the exponent. So when we simplify this, what do we note? n factorial is going to be the product of 1 through n, but we're going to have an n on top, so the n's are going to cancel out, leaving me with a product on the bottom of 1 through n minus 1. So that's going to be n minus 1 factorial down here. Or I could take derivatives up here, term by term. The 1 is going to go to 0. x minus 1 is going to go to 1. The x minus 1 squared over 2, the 2 comes down, cancels the 2 in the bottom, leaving me with x minus 1. And then if I go to the x minus 1 cubed over 3 factorial, the 3 comes down, turning the 3 factorial into 2 factorial. And then I have an x minus 1 squared. Okay, so it's 6 and 1 half dozen the other. Okay, anyway, if you notice, f of x and f prime of x are going to be equal to each other. So that's interesting. But let's go to the antiderivative next. So we do the antiderivative of f of x, what do we get? Rule says, put in your constant of integration, and then what are we going to do? We're going to look at our original up here. We're going to take a look at the 
exponent, add one, flip it over. So I get an n plus one, flipping it over gives me an n plus one on the bottom. And as before with the derivative, we're gonna get something that combines nicely in the bottom. So n plus one times n factorial, again, n factorial is the product of one through n, if I multiply by n plus 1, it turns into the product of 1 through n plus 1, or n plus 1 factorial. So what happens now? If I write out the first few terms, we're going to be looking at our constant of integration. Okay, if we put a 0 into there, I'm going to get x minus 1, x minus 1 squared over 2, and so on. And so what do you note? Well, first off, I'd like to say this is equal to f of x, but I'm missing the 1. Is that a problem? No, because this constant of integration can be anything we want until we actually pick a point on the function with a value. So I'm going to borrow a 1 from the C1. So we're going to subtract the 1 off of C0. The constant doesn't really matter yet, so that 1 can hang out here if we like. Now I've got any derivative of f of x dx is going to be equal to C1 plus f of x. So the antiderivative of our function is the function itself. Okay, let's look at some punchlines to all this. The first is going to be, okay, we know in the first case the interval of convergence was going to be all the real numbers. So since there's no endpoints, that's just going to be the same for the derivative and the antiderivative. So in all three cases, radius of convergence is going to be plus infinity, interval of convergence, all real numbers. Now, we noted before, f of x is going to be equal to e to the x minus 1. So we haven't seen that yet. We'll see that later. So what happens when I take the derivative of this? Well, it's derivative. Think of this as e to the u. It's going to be you return your e to the u and then take the derivative of u. But the derivative of x minus 1 is equal to 1. So the derivative of f of x is just going to be f prime of x. If I do the antiderivative, same idea. I do a u substitution for e to the x minus 1. We let u be equal to x minus 1 du is going to be equal to dx. So I take the antiderivative, antiderivative of e to the u, it's just going to be e to the u plus a constant. So when I put the u back in, I'm just going to have e x minus 1 plus a constant. So we see that when we use the closed form, it's going to agree with what we get when we use the series form. More on that later. 